Hey guys, so this is another talking video. If you haven't noticed, I really do like talking, and I don't know if you guys enjoy my talking snippets, but I like talking, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, this video is about a topic that's been on my mind a lot recently, and it was also something that was on my mind the last time around when I had my YouTube channel, and this is just the idea of does YouTubing help or hurt your hair journey and I think for some people it can help their hair journey and I think for others it can actually hurt their hair journey and so sometimes I wonder if some of the people who experience problems with their hair me being one of them um, back then and hopefully not now but back then if it has something to do with YouTube so for example, if your channel is hair related, if what you do is hair, if what you talk about is hair, if your whole channel is based around this idea of hair, styling it, product reviews, things of that nature, does that affect your hair journey, either in a positive manner or a negative manner? So you have people who, for example, do product reviews on their channel. And so they're trying out new products all the time, if that's a big part of their channel. Pretty much like every month or sometimes multiple times a month with different lines and things of that nature. And probably wouldn't be trying out that many products or lines if they didn't have a YouTube channel. So as we know, unfortunately, not every product works great for our hair. A lot of products are just not compatible with our hair, with our texture, with our porosity, whatever the case may be. And so sometimes you get knots and tangles from some of the products that you use. Sometimes your hair is dry and doesn't feel moisturized. Depending on what product you put in your hair, sometimes you have to wash that out and restyle your hair. So I feel like Sometimes if you didn't have a natural hair channel or a hair channel in general or you didn't do product reviews, there probably wouldn't be as much temptation to try all these different products. It would be more so once you find something that works for your hair, you stick with it and your hair just continues to progress with that product. The other example is just styling videos. I mean, I feel like us everyday folk and I include myself in that because I don't do anything extravagant but if styling is a big part of your channel and so you're constantly trying to come up with new styles to show your viewers which is great which is helpful but sometimes you're messing in your hair a lot more frequently than you would be if you were just going on about your day-to-day -day life um, if you didn't have a channel. And so sometimes I wonder if all this extra manipulation that we do because of our channel negatively affects our hair. Now there is the part where it could be positive because you have that sense of, I guess, accountability to your viewers and so you feel like you have to take really good care of your hair because especially if you're known for healthy hair and long hair, luscious hair, and things of that nature, you may feel more compelled to actually do right by your hair. And so in that case, you have a more prosperous journey than you would had you not felt accountable for keeping up with the maintenance of your hair. So I don't know. Like, I feel like way back when, when I had my channel, which wasn't that long ago, but I felt like YouTube negatively impact my hair journey because I'm a very impulsive person, <laughs> especially when it comes to my hair. And so sometimes seeing new content, seeing new products, seeing new hairstyles, seeing this and that tempts me to want to fool in my hair. Um, also, if somebody makes a video talking about their scalp itches or something like that, then my scalp itches. I might have not had no issues with my scalp until I watched a video of somebody talking about how their scalp itches. Um, 
another thing is, you know, people would have these really nice styles with flexi rods and curl formers and perm rods and roller sets and all these things. And I'm like, oh, I want to try that. I want my hair to look something similar to that. And it just did not work for my hair. Those items did not work for my hair. And so the reason that I only had 14 flexi rods is because I got rid of most of my rollers because I was always tempted to try something new with them because I had seen something, but it never goes well for my hair and I end up doing more damage than good. Another thing is like me, I don't use combs, okay? But a lot of naturals do use combs. The only time I've been using a comb now is doing the comb chase method. But other than that, I don't use combs. And I know that combs don't work for my hair. I know this, you know, I know this. But way back then, sometimes I would see naturals using combs and they would have a kinkier type hair texture. I'm like, okay, I'm just doing something wrong. I need to try out the comb again. They make it look so simple and their wash days are so quick compared to my all day marathons that I do with my hair. So then I would whip out that comb again and attempt to do it and just, again, cause more damage than good. So anyways, I don't know. It's just something that's been on my mind and something that I definitely don't want to happen this time around now that I am back on YouTube is I don't want to be influenced like I was back then um, to be impulsive and to make rash decisions when it comes to my hair and I don't ever want my channel to feel like a chore and that's why the style of this channel is more video diary. I'm kind of just sharing my experiences as they naturally occur. I'm not doing product reviews. I'm not doing styling videos or anything like that unless it just happens to be something that I would do on a normal basis. Like if I decide tomorrow that I wanted to try curl formers just because I decided to, well then if I want to record it and share it, then that would be something that I did rather than, oh, my viewers are expecting this from me, so let me do that to my hair. You get what I'm saying? I don't know. But anyways, let me know your thoughts if you think that YouTube potentially affects people's hair journey in a negative or a positive manner, or both, or whatever your opinions are on the matter. I think that it might not be so bad nowadays because just, you know, looking around, it doesn't seem that natural hair is that big of a topic like it was about three, four years ago, um, around like 2012-ish when I first went natural. It's like all you saw, but now it seems to be dwindling down a bit. People have cut their hair. Um, some people have gone back to relaxers. Some people have left YouTube. Some people have changed the focus of their hair channel to more beauty related things or to vlogs, um, things of that nature. And so, I don't know, just let me know your thoughts and I'll talk to you later. Bye!